Mr. Sensenbrenner, former chairman of the Judiciary Committee. The gentleman from Wisconsin is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you. Before I begin, I demand a division of the question for a separate vote on each of the four articles of impeachment. The question is divisible and will be divided by vote and by article. Mr. Speaker, both the Task Force on Judicial Impeachment and the Full Judiciary Committee unanimously adopted and reported out House Resolution 1031. The overwhelming support for this resolution is indicative of the weight of evidence supporting the four articles of impeachment against Judge G. Thomas Porteous. Impeaching a federal judge is not something that the House of Representatives takes lightly, and impeachment proceedings are not something that we consider too often around here. Uh, by my count, this is only the 20th time that the House of Representatives will impeach a civil officer under the Constitution, and these tasks are not pleasant. But we need to do them from time to time. It is our responsibility as members of the House of Representatives, and I have been involved in a number of impeachment proceedings over the years, but never before have I seen the overwhelming and blatant corruption we have before us here today. Judge Porteous is one of a kind, and it is time for him to receive his comeuppance. The FBI and Justice Department have spent years investigating the wrongdoings by this judge. After their investigation, the Judicial Conference of the United States unanimously voted to refer this matter to the United States House of Representatives. In addition to the Justice Department's investigation, the staff of our impeachment task force conducted a systematic investigation. This investigation resulted in four evidentiary hearings over the course of five days late last year, and it culminated in the full Judiciary Committee unanimously voting to approve four articles of impeachment against Judge Porteous. The impeachment task force hearings laid out overwhelming corruption orchestrated by Judge Porteous. My colleagues on the task force have detailed the specific actions taken by Judge Porteous, but I think it is worthwhile to focus on a few of them. Judge Porteous was engaged in a crooked kickback scheme with his buddies at the law firm of Amato and Creeley. The firm received tens of thousands of dollars in curator fees, and they kicked back about half of it to the judge. The kickback scheme wasn't the only shading dealing Judge Porteous engaged with with Amato and Creeley. He was so emboldened that he would solicit gifts and cash while sitting on the bench. Sometimes he accepted trips. Other days it was an expensive lunch or dinner. On another occasion, Creeley helped pay for the judge's son's bachelor party in Las Vegas. He didn't just solicit from Amato and Creeley, but also from others with business before his court. With this information alone, there should be no question about his blatant ethical lapses rendering him unfit to serve on the federal bench. But there's more. Judge Porteous made false and misleading statements under the penalty of perjury with regard to his debts and bankruptcy proceedings. He misrepresented his name on court filings and used the post office box to conceal his identity. He also attempted to conceal assets and violated court rules. While it's sad to say these actions almost seem innocuous compared to his other actions, and corrupt relationships. Our task force spent a day focusing our attention on Judge Porteous's relationship with a bail modsman named Louis Marcotte and his sister Lori. This hearing included testimony about Judge soliciting meals and trips, like he did with the lawyers, but also other things of value, such as auto and home repairs. In return, Judge Porteous assisted the Marcottes. Judge Porteous had the opportunity to testify before the task force but he chose not to participate in the proceedings. The entirety of the record by the task force plainly shows a pattern of unethical conduct that is not worthy of a federal judge. The evidence demonstrates that he clearly abused his office, then had complete disregard for the laws that he took an oath to uphold. Soon the onus will fall on the Senate to hold a trial. The clock is ticking, and it's important this trial take place promptly. Judge Porteous's suspension is set to expire in September, making him eligible to return to the bench. It is imperative that the Senate act expeditiously to ensure that this corrupt judge does not resume his perch on the federal bench and preside again. 
I urge my colleagues to join me in voting to impeach Judge G. Thomas Porteous on each of the four articles of impeachment, and I yield back the balance of my time.